discuss the recent causes of inflation in India. Under this recent causes, the first cause is growing prosperity and the dietary shift. Suppose your income is only 100 rupees. So you, maybe you can afford only bajra or maybe maize. But when your income increases, so now you can afford some high value goods and services. These high value goods and services, we can say bajra and maize has been replaced by wheat and rice. If still your income increases, so this wheat and rice will be replaced by maybe high value goods, pulses, uh, milk, we can have eggs, we can have chicken. So all this thing can replace if your income increases. So due to this MG Narega and all these programs, the prosperity of rural areas also increase and due to all social welfare programs of India, as well as in urban areas also. The, uh, the income has increased. So because of this growing prosperity, the dietary has been changed. There is a dietary shift from cereals, food cereals to protein rich items like pulses and all. Pulses, egg, milk and all. That is why the prices of this protein rich item has increased drastically. And this is the major cause of high in food inflation in India. And high food inflation is the major cause of increase in the value of CPI in India. So related to this we have one law that is known as Angel's law. What Angel's law says is, first we will explain, suppose this is year, in 2015, in 2016, in 2017, this is your income and this is expenditure on food. And this is percentage expenditure on food, percentage of your income. So suppose your income is 100 rupees, it became 200 and it became 300. So expenditure on food, for example, in first year it was 50%. Now before that, I want to tell you that food is the basic backbone of survival. So if you have 100 rupees, the first priority that you will give is to your food only. So the maximum expenditure, if you have only 10 rupees for example, 20 rupees per day you are earning. So the maximum thing will go to the basic needs that is it will go to the food. So expenditure on food is 50 rupees. So percentage expenditure on food is 50 percent. Suppose next year your income doubled and it became 200 rupees and the expenditure on food will not become 100. It will not be double because the basic needs are same only. You can only change the quality. So maybe now you are consuming ex or the consumption or the expenditure on food is 90 rupees. So we can say is 95 percent. So when it is becoming uh, 300 rupees, maybe your expenditure on food becomes 100, 110, 120, whatever the amount is. Suppose it becomes 150. So now the expenditure on food will be 41 percent, 42 percent, whatever the amount will be. So can you see it that when your income increases, although the expenditure on food increases, but the percentage expenditure on food is decreasing. The reason is food is the basic thing. If you have 1 rupees, 2 rupees, 5 rupees, the maximum share you want to give to the basic need that is food. This is what the angel's law says. It says when your income increases, the percentage expenditure on food decreases. This is known as angel's law. So next we will discuss the next cause. So the next cause is MSP minimum support price. So under minimum support price, suppose this is farmer and this is Mundi or FCI in two alternatives. So earlier suppose this Mundi was offering 100 rupees 400 kg of wheat. It means the price becomes 10 rupees per kg. So to the customer it was available at maybe rupees 25 after some commissions and all these things processing. Once the FCI came into picture and government started implementing MSP, so it is a minimum support price and this Mandi was offering 1000 rupees that is actually less. 
So FCI gave a promise. I'll give you fifteen hundred rupees for one hundred kg of wheat. So now maybe the customer has to pay thirty two, thirty three rupees or thirty rupees per kg of wheat. So it has increased because of MSP. From socialist perspective, MSP is very good. But from economics perspective, MSP is increasing inflation in the economy. This is how it is increasing the inflation. And when it has increased. so ultimately the cost of cultivation has increased also the other items like diesel food feeder and all these things so whatever these other things the prices of all these items has also increased so this is also one of the reason of inflation then we have the next reason is mg narega so from socialist perspective it is one of the best program of the world the best scheme in the world but from economics perspective because it is economics class so we have to criticize mg narega so under this criticism what we can say again the same example suppose farmer is there two options first one is suppose one landlord is there So this farmer is having two options: either to cultivate food grains in his or her own land, but suppose there is no land available to this farmer, so they will work on the work of somebody else's land or on the work of this landlord. This farmer, the second option which is being provided by the government is MG Narega. You know what is the similarity between this MG Narega, right to education, right to information, National Food Security Act? all these schemes are can be clubbed together how they can be clubbed together they can be clubbed if you will compare between dpsp and fundamental rights fundamental rights are justiciable when we say fundamental rights are justiciable it means if somebody else is encroaching your fundamental rights you can go to the supreme court or the high court you can contact this comes under judicial review so it means it is justiciable in case of dpsp these are the principle these are only the guidelines suggested by the constitution makers to the executives or the government but if government is not implementing anything under dpsp for example we have article 44 uniform civil code if government is not implementing uniform civil code we cannot go to the court that this government is not implementing article 44 because Article forty four comes under DPSP and which is not justiciable. So earlier, if government was giving was coming up with some programs, just like right to food program was there. So under right to food, if government was not able to fulfill the commitment given by the government, there was no option. And that era is known as charity based approach. so that charity based approach has now been replaced by rights based approach it has become your right so if government is not giving you work under mg narega you can go to the court because it is mentioned in mg narega act that whenever there will be demand of work within 15 days you have to provide the work under right to education nobody can stop a kid of the age 16 to 14 years from going to the school you cannot stop it under rti you have to provide information under national food security act 66% of the population will be covered so now this charity based approach has been replaced by this rights based approach so it has become your right anyways back to this uh, rights based approach is the best mechanism to remove poverty or for poverty elevation program it has very much successful in latin american countries as well as china anyways back to this mg narega so farmer this farmer is having two options either work in the farmlands of this landlord or work under mg narega now because mg narega is a statutory thing so government provides you some wages and that is assured one plus some uh, whatever the value of the inflation that will be added every year so because now we have competition so when mg narega wages every year are increasing so landlords also have to increase these wages because the bargaining power of this farmer has increased they have one more alternative so because of mg narega also this has caused inflation in the economy next cause is 
rural liquidity and credit so this rural liquidity it means money supply in rural areas has increased because of two three major reasons this mg nirek and all we already covered first reason is land sales a lot of uh, land has been sold under ncr reason or whatever the satellite towns that we have suppose this is the major city towns around this through which the daily commutation takes place they are known as satellite towns so lot of land is sold in this particular areas <clears throat> so when selling of these area is going to take place this we can say in case of delhi it is ncr reason so when this selling is going to take place it is going to increase the money supply and when money supply is going to be increased so inflation will be one problem the second one is rural credit so in every year budget in every budget government has to give a target like this much amount of money will be available to farmers or rural areas in this financial year and that is to be implemented by the banks just like we discussed that priority sector lending 18% of your net lending you have to provide to agriculture so for this year the target is 9 lakh crores every year this target is increasing so this is a huge money which is being ensured by the government this money will be provided to the rural areas so this as well as land sales it has increased the rural liquidity and credit the next cause is labor shifting to the construction so let's discuss some statistics in 2012 13 so suppose this is what the labor this is in crores agriculture construction and we have service sector so in agriculture sector it was 26 crore which became 23 crores in construction sector it was 2.5 crore increased to 5 crores it was 11 crore became 12.5 crores so this difference of 3 crore so 3 crore less labor we have which are being shifted to construction service or some other sector so the labor force in case of agriculture is decreasing and when the labor force is decreasing it means the prices or the wages of labor in agriculture is going to increase and when their wages is going to increase the cost of cultivation is going to increase cost of cultivation increases final price increases final price increases means inflation is going to take place similarly the share of employment at the time of independence 80% of the population was dependent on agriculture it decreased and now 60% was dependent in 2004 5 and now this figure is less than 50% so this itself shows that the dependency the employment provided by agriculture is decreasing so when less people will be less labor will be available in agriculture so their wages is going to increase and when their wages increase cost of cultivation increase cost of cultivation increase final product price increase final product price increase means inflation the last major cause the last the recent one is the female participation often it comes in the newspaper that there is a migration takes place from rural areas to urban areas and due to this migration this is only a male migration so only male uh the, the migrates from rural areas to urban areas suppose this is rural area and this is urban only male migration takes place so uh, who, who left the female is left and the female will be involved in the agriculture so this is one aspect agree but the female participation in the agriculture has decreased it is possible that the female the percentage of female in rural areas has increased but their participation in agriculture has decreased how it has decreased because of two reasons first one is right to education so more girls are now enrolled in the school so when they are enrolled in schools they will not become a part of the agriculture so this is what <coughs> more investment in the education and next the standard of living so when males are migrating from rural to urban areas they are sending some money back this money has increased the standard of living and when the standard of living has increased 
so the now the female they don't involve in the agriculture so these are the two major reasons first one is more investment in the education and second one is the standard of living has increased so they don't the post the percentage of female in rural areas might have increased but their percentage in the agriculture their involvement in agriculture has decreased because of increasing standard of living